spirit may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Please go on. He says that your eyes of understanding being enlightened. How do you see? He says that you may know that you may know knowledge. Pastor has taught us. He said this word knowledge from what? What does it mean? It's an aspiration knowledge. It's from the word gnosko. To know. We come to a precise and accurate knowledge and accurate experience of what he's talking about. He says, what is the hope of his calling? And what is the riches of his glory? Of his inheritance in his sense? We're not dwelling on this. Can we see Philippians 1.9? Philippians 1.9. Knowledge. He says, sorry, 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. He says, and this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more. In what? Knowledge. In knowledge. In knowledge. The emphasis on knowledge, when you say Apostle Paul, is so great. He says, grow in grace. Through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says that the communication of your faith be made effectual. By what? By the acknowledge. He puts no acknowledge. You know it. You are now acknowledging it. How do we win as believers? By knowledge. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor just left. I want it. Okay, maybe when he comes. All right. Can we see the book of um our Holy Spirit help me? Father, we pray. In the name of Jesus, that your word comes as life to every one of us. In the name of Jesus, that the devil is terrified at his heart. That you alone is glorified. And we are edified. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to learn God's love again. How many of you are excited? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Bolu came here the other time and he was literally saying everything. I was telling Pastor Isaac, I was like, let me just repeat what he has said. <laughs> so massive, I celebrate. Can we celebrate Pastor Bolu for that wonderful time? God's love, amazing, amazing. Celebrate you, sir. Can we celebrate my pastor, your pastor, our pastor? Come on! Pastor, thank you so much for this privilege to share God's word to God's people. I do not take it for granted. I am very, very, very honored to be here. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Let's get to work. Matthew 22, verse 33 to, to 40. Matthew 22. The Bible says, and when the multitude heard, they were astonished at his doctrine. He says, but when the Pharisee had heard that he had put some Sadducees to silence, before now, it was, they were talking about marriage, um, who gets to marry, marry in heaven and all of that. That's not emphasis, so we're not going to focus on that. He says, they were gathered together, 35. He says, but one of them asked, a lawyer, you know how lawyers can be? Lawyers at times, you know, they, they feel like they can argue. They can give you facts and different things. He, he said, which one? Which was a lawyer. He said, ask him a question, tempting him, saying, he says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. He says, with all your soul. He says, and with all your mind. 38. He says, and this, please follow me carefully. He says, and this is the first and great commandment. The first and great commandment. You see, Jesus was actually quoting um, one of the law here. This is one of the law. He says, and the second is like unto it. He says, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. You see, but they felt relaxed. But Jesus says something in verse 40. He says, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophet. He says, all the law, all the law and the prophets. The law representing the 613 laws, 
the law representing the Ten Commandments, the prophet representing the major and the minor prophets. He says, the commandment of love, it hangs all of them. Do you know what the word hang means? It means to suspend. It's more like you have a whole book full filled up here. Full filled up here. And then they were asking. It's just more like you have a whole textbook, very, very big. And they're asking you, asking you, what is the most important thing in this book? What, what is the most? You see, all that the laws and the prophets were trying to say, all that the, every, every one of them, all they were trying to say was love. He said, I am, I am, Moses came down from, from the uh, Mount Sinai. There were earthquakes. There were different quakes. You know, different. You see, all God was trying to tell them was love. But they were not capable. That was why it was, it was a law to them. He said, the law was, the, 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 the love was a law to them. He said, but to us, it is no longer a law. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Can we see the book of um, John 13, 34 to 35? I have to be very fast. John 13, 34 to 35. All right. A new commandment I give unto you. This is just speaking. A new commandment. He says that you love one another. He says, as I have loved you. Please stay there. 34, 34. That I have loved you. That you also love one another. All right. 35. He says, by this, all men shall know that what? <laughs> That if you love one another. Can you see what Jesus is saying? Jesus is, 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 is making the, the complexity of the law and the prophets. In a very simple word. He says that all men may know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Amen. John 15 verse 12. John 15 verse 12. John 15 verse 12. This. Is my commandment. Jesus speaking. He says that you love one another as I have loved you. So it's a command here. That we love one another as he has loved us. Can we see Romans 13, 8 to 10? Romans 13, 8 to 10. Romans 13, 8 to 10. Now this is, this, this is law. Not in the Old Testament. This is law in the New Testament. And this was Apostle Paul speaking. He says, oh, no man, anything. He says, but to love one another. He says, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Did you see what I've been trying to say since? The law and the prophets, everything loves fulfilled. It fulfills everything. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do this. The law, if you can walk in love, you have fulfilled all the commandment all the laws that there is every single thing can we go on verse 9 he says for this he says thou shall not commit adultery thou shall not kill thou shall not steal thou shall not bear false witness he says thou shall not covet he says if there be any commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying can you see Everything has been simplified to love. Next, it's namely, he says, please stay there, stay there. He says, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 10. He says, love. Can we read this together? Can we read this together? So how is the law fulfilled? By love. So when you love one another, when we love one another, all the laws have been fulfilled. Every of the law is hanging in love. Because when you truly are walking in love, all other commandments, they won't be difficult for you. So love is the fulfillment of the law. Amen. Can we see um, Ephesians 5.9? Ephesians 5.9. All right. The Bible says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Sorry, 19. Is it 9? Yeah. For the, wait, stay there, stay there, stay there. No, stay there. 9. 
says, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10. He says, proving what is acceptable unto, unto the Lord. All right, verse, verse 12. All right. No, no, no. Go to verse 11. I'm trying to see something. It says, and have no fellowship with your unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. There's something I'm trying to check. Can you see John 15? John 15. John 15. Holy Spirit. Verse 12. It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So when we love, what have we done? We have fulfilled all the commandments. You see, but the beautiful thing is, can you now go to um, um, Ephesians 5.18? Galatians, rather. Galatians. Galatians 5.19. Go to 19. Galatians 5.19. He says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, which is the law, don't do this. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, envy, mother, drunkenness, and so on. He says, as I have told you, you are too fast. He says, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now verse 22. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. I want you to see this. He said the fruit. He didn't say the fruit. Of the spirit. He said the fruit. One. The fruit of the spirit. Is love. The word is. Is a singular verb. It's from the word estis. You see. If, 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 you, if we begin to put joy. You see. If it's, it's, it's love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering. You see. All of these things. They are found in love. You see. The love there. Is the most important. It is the form, first and foremost. It is the fruit of the spirit. Every other one, they are subsets of love. Talk about joy. Talk about peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Everything they are subsets in love. Can we see um, um, 1 Corinthians 12? 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, give me the last verse. 1 Corinthians 12. I'm trying to show you something. Holy Spirit, help me. All right. All right, all right, all right. Can you go to um, 20, 20, 25? 26? All right. 27? All right. It says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. 28. It says, now, look at this, look at this, look at this. It says, and God has appointed these in the church. He <laughs> said, first, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. And then gifts of healing. Helps. Administration. Varieties of tongues. 29. He says, are all apostles? Are all pastors? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Now verse 30. He says, do all have the gift of healing? Do all prophets, do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? He says, but earnestly, he said, there's a but, there's a redirection, but earnestly desire the best gifts. He said, and I show you a more excellent way. You see, the, 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 there, is a, a, there is a strong connection between verse 12 and verse 13. There is a connection between verse 12 and verse 13. Can you go to 13.1? He, he said, I will show you a more excellent way. In verse 13, he shows us the more excellent way. And this is the excellent way. So what he was trying to say was that apostles, gates of healing, whatever that he mentioned, he says all of those things, there is an excellent way. Miracles, there is an excellent way. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and of, and of angels, but I have not love, he says, I have become brass or a clanging cymbals. If you read on to the, to the end, you, you, you see how he was differentiating, he it, it was, it was putting superiority to love over every other thing. To show that love supersedes all of it. Apostles, prophets, there's a part I want us to see. 
Still in that verse 13. He says, for we know in part. And we we'll prophesy in part. If you can help me. Verse 9. He says, for we know in part. And we we'll prophesy in part. Why did he say we know in part here? You see, it was trying to show that. Okay. You would, okay, the, the, the scriptures will always explain scriptures, right? We know in part, we prophesy in part. He said, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. So what is the perfect one here? Love. Whether prophecy, you know you prophesy in parts. Whether knowledge, you know in parts. Every other thing you know in part. He said, but love, it is perfect in us. The Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. It has been shed abroad in our hearts. The last verse of, of, of um, 13, the last verse of 13. All right. That last verse, last verse. It says, and now abide faith, hope, and love. This, he said, these three, he said, but the greatest is love. It's love. You see, I tried to wonder, I was, I was literally meditating on this, that a believer that truly understands the love of God can never walk, walk in unforgiveness. Can never walk in, because when you understand the love of God to us, there is no way you won't be able to give others also. You see, this is, this is how it works. You see, the revelation of God's love to you is how you're able to measure love to other people. Someone did something that is so great, so massive, something that is unforgivable on this earth. It is unforgivable because your that, that is it, because your heart has not been grounded in the love of God so much in that area. If truly your heart has been grounded, you will find it easy to let go over that situation. So, what is lacking? You need more love, more knowledge of love. You need more knowledge of love. That is why some things are unforgivable. Because if you love, the Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. Abroad in our hearts. All our hearts. Everything. That the whole of us should exhibit is love. The greatest of all of this is love. Faith, hope, love. But the greatest is love. Amen. How has God loves us? Let us see the love of God to us. How has God loves us? He gave. The first thing he gave. The book of John 3.16. The Bible says, For God so loved the whole world, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but will have eternal life. He so loved. You know, I, I, I tried to look at these things and I was trying to wonder, did God actually, did, did he do a good thing? Did God, did, like, did he do a good thing? Like, for example, look at it in a literal sense. Pastor Lee, brought Yeshua and then used Yeshua as a sacrifice for the king's up. The pastor did, did it do a good thing? If, we, if, if Yeshua takes pastor to the court of law, who will win? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> it shows how much length God is willing to go for us. He said, God did not do a good thing, no. It's not a good thing. If it's a good thing, try it. <laughs> it is because of love. You see, when you love, there are some things that you would do for love. Please don't take it to the extreme. Huh? <laughs> but the truth is, love is extreme. Because the love that God gives to us is 100%. You see, God is not increasing in his love for you. No. 
He is not decreasing in his love for you. No. The love he has for you is 100%. It is static. Whether you are good or not, he loves you. 100%. You see, he is not faithful because you are faithful. He is faithfulness himself. Love is his person. The book of 1 John, he says, for God is love. He is his person. The reason why God would not think twice for Jesus is because of how much his soul loved us. Whether he did bad or not, it doesn't matter. But love was the focus. Love is the purpose of what he did. Because of love. John 15, 12 to 13. All right. So I, I, want, I want us to see something, especially in that John 3, 16. And you see, uh, okay, let's, let's continue. John 15, uh, please let's go to Romans 5, 8. All right. It says, it's the Bible says, but God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How many of you will ever even think of, even if you want to die for anybody, and it is you want to die for people in, in your circle? What? People that are what it? You will think of, ah, Eli, the things this one has done. This one is faithful. This one is loyal, oh. Ah, no. Is this one I'll die for? When I was, when I was not, when I was not all right, this one was the one there for me, oh. Even if I'm going to, is that one you will die for? You see, but God did not, he, did, he had no thought of all of that. He says, while we, we are still sinners. He said, the beautiful thing is, the love he, he, he gave us while we were still sinners is not different from the love he gives us now. He's not. The Bible says, Apostle Paul is saying, he says, I, the chiefest of all the sinners. He said, if God was to be just enough, Paul would not even be the, f he would not even, he would not even test all this revelation that he had, he, he is giving to us. Apostle Paul says, he says, to me, the least of the saints. He called himself the least, because he, he knew that he was a bad boy, a bad boy. The least of the saints is this grace given. Nah. And you know the beautiful thing? The extent of God's love is revealed in the death of Jesus. You see, when you see the, 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 the love of God is not revealed in, in, in things. Sorry to say. God can give you. You see, but if God gives you and he doesn't give on that person. It doesn't mean that he loves you less than the other person. Because the revelation of his love, the, 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 the emphasis of his love is not in the giving of things. It's in the giving of his son. Because we know that if he has given Christ, he can give all things. So don't focus. If, for example, you see you have a friend and the friend bought a car recently and like, ah, he said, that's when you now begin to open your own life chapter with God. God, I mean, call. Oh, no, i me. Who told you he forgot you? Who told you you were not in the palm of his hands? Who told you? Who told you? When your own come, you will not say, ah, Olua, Nipa, you know. no, 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 no. At that time, you'll be filled with thanksgiving. You see, God loves you irregardless or whatever. You see, as long as Jesus has died for you, be rest assured that God loves you. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Ephesians 5 verse 1. He said, therefore, be imitators of God. How many of you will imitate God when he gave his only son? As their children. Verse 2. He says, I walk in love. He says, as Christ also has loved us and given himself. He gave himself. What is easy to give? Things or myself. 
What is easy to give? He says, Christ has also loved us and given himself for us. He says, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Verse 3. All right, let's stop at verse 2, sir. All right? We see the love of God in the forgiveness of sins. Bible says, in him we have received forgiveness of sins. We have received the gift of righteousness. He says, all of them was a display. He is a display of love. Redemption, Pastor, 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 that he was teaching us yesterday to buy back. is a display of love. Because if you buy, even if he doesn't, we were slaves. Right? We were lost in our sin. If he doesn't buy us, we will still be there. Abby, it's a, it's a display of love. Remission of sins. Amen. Amen. And you see, the beautiful thing is, the expectation of the believer is to love the same way, the same way that God loves. Not less. The same way God has measured love to us is the same way we are to measure love to ourselves. The highest way he showed love to us is that he gave himself. We should do that for ourselves. For example, I'm in need. Or, or, or whatever. I, I need someone. I need, I need Pastor Lee. He's there for me. Because he loves me. When, when he needs me, I'm there for him. Because, he, because I love him. You see, that is the culture. Of the believer. He said love is the number one culture the believer must hold on to. Love. Amen. I want us to see the book of Romans 8 verse 26. Romans 8 26. I'm rounding up. All right. He says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we have. He says, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. He says, and he that searcheth the heart. You see, that place the Holy Spirit is praying for us. He says, and he that searcheth the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession. He's here. The Scripture will explain Scriptures. Because he makes intercession for us. Who makes intercession for another person? If not for love. Because it makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us. Why is he making intercession for us? Because of love. He loves us. He loves us. You see, when you, when, you, when, you, when, you are, when you think about the things of this, you see, when you think about when trials and temptations come and all of that, he said, focus on the love of God. I tell you, you will, everything will fizzle away. It will, because the security that we have is in that God loves us. Yes. That's the greatest security you will have. Sorry, let me use this scenario. When something happens right now, Pastor Isaac, when something happens right now, let's say, no, it's, nothing is going to happen, you know. When something happens, what do you call first? You call your pastor. Why? Why would you call a pastor? He loves you. See, when something happens, who, okay, let me ask, Mama, who would you call first? Yo, why? Because, you see, Mama, I don't need to ask. You see, there is security in love. You know that this person loves me enough to come for me. So when you are going through things, think of it now. You see, God loves you so much that there is no shadow Pastors, 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 pastors. He didn't light up. Uh huh. He didn't climb up, coming out to me. 
There is no wall he didn't kick down, lie he didn't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless, reckless. Oh, God. Oh, he chases me down, fights in run from leaves of 99. I couldn't hurt I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. Holy, overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Can we go on? That same verse. All right, can we continue? Verse, verse 28. He says, and we know. Can we say this together? When things are going in the odd manner, there is rest. Why? Because all things work together for good to them that love God. Verse 29. Verse, 20, verse 30. There's something I'm, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to. All right. Verse 31. All right. See this. Love. He says, what shall we say then? If God be for us. You don't understand this. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us. Who can be against us? You see, you, the, the believer is not, is, not, is not deficient of love. You don't just understand it. The Bible says in verse 32, it says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, he says, How, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 30, 33, who shall lay a charge? Anything to the charge of God's elect. It is just God that justifies. 34. All right? Who is it that condemns? It is Christ that died. No one can condemn you. He says, Red brother, that is, that is risen again. He says, Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession? Can you see how many people making intercession for you here? The first one, we see the Holy Spirit making intercession for us. You see, here we see Jesus Christ also making intercession. He says, who also make it intercession? You see, God loves you so much. Even when you are going in the wrong direction, he's making intercession for you. That's how much he loves you. He loves us. 35. He says, who shall separate us <laughs> from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Answer me now. Or just the distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. He says, and this is, and this is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. He says, no. Hiya. Shabaya. He says, no, in all these things, <laughs> we are more than conquerors through him. <laughs> he says, Apostle, Apostle Paul, you understand this thing so much. 38, he says, for I am persuaded. You know the word persuaded, you know what it means? I am convinced. Fully convinced. He said, there's a conviction of love you must have. If not, I am persuaded beyond doubt. Thank you for this. Amplified. Oh my God. <laughs> he says, I'm sure. <laughs> the neither death, no life. No angels, no principalities, no things impending or threatening, no things to come, no powers, no height, no depth, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of, of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, 
the love that God has had for us, the devil cannot, he, he's not in between. He can't stay beside. He cannot. The Bible was saying in the Old Testament, it says, can a mother forget his suckling child? No. He said, that kind of love is a very good one. He said, but the love of God is even greater. Verse 40. Hands there? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see Ephesians 3. Rounding up already. Ephesians 3. Verse 18. All right. Can you start from verse 17? All right. He says, That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you will be rooted and grounded in love. You know what it means to have roots? To have roots in love. Pastor Josh was teaching us yesterday. What did he say about roots? It is the most essential part. And his apostle Paul was praying for the church here that what they have roots in is love. That they are rooted and grounded in love. 18. He said that they may be able to comprehend with all the sense what is the breath and the length and the depth and the height. He says, and to know the love of Christ which surpass knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Look at this. No, stay there. He says, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. You see, Apostle Paul is not trying to say here that we cannot understand the love. No. You see, what he's saying is that, is that, is that the love is, we, we understand it, but there's so much more to understand. You see, I, I, I was checking, I was checking a, um, a version yesterday and they were explaining it. I think I might, I might actually, no, stay, stay with, stay with, stay with King James. King James. He says, he says, and to know the love of Christ, he says, which surpass. That is, the love of Christ is the, is the surpassing knowledge that the believer should long after. To know the love of Christ, which is the surpassing knowledge. And guess what? When you know the love of Christ, the Bible says you will be filled with the fullness of him. So when your eyes is open to the love of Christ, he says, what are you doing? You have been filled. Because when you puncture God, what comes out is love. The Bible says for God is love. The fullness of God is love. God is love himself. So when we know, when we are able to comprehend the love, he said what is happening is we are coming to the fullness of, of God. So what is the, what is the, what, what, how do we know that you have come to the fullness of God? Of, 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 of God? Is, it, is, it, is it by prophecy? Is it by healing the sick? By what? Love. By love. This is by love. It is by love. Amen. Amen. I round up with this. First John 4, 17 to 19. Ah, I didn't say something. Before, before I, go to, I, I go to this, you see, God has a love language. Every one of us has a love language. Every one of us has, has a love language. I don't want to... Pastor Josh, what's your love language? Every one of us has a love language. Some is gifts. Some is calls. You see, but the love language of God is souls. The Bible says in 1 Timothy, it says it is the will of God that all men be saved and, and come to the knowledge of the truth. The book of John 21, verse 15 to 17. John 21, 15 to 17. He says, so when he had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon John of Jonas, love me more than this. He said unto him. He said unto him. He said unto him. He said unto him, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lambs. 16. He said to him again. The second time, Simon, son of Jonas, loves me more than this. He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, you know I love you. 
But he said unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest me? Peter was grieved. Kilo they gone. Because he said unto him the third time, love me more than this. And he said unto him, Lord, you know I love you. He says, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. He said, one of the ways that we can love God is to go out there and win souls and teach the gospel. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 28, it says, go ye therefore. The word go ye is from the word having gone. It's an expectation of the believer. So when we reach out to the lost, we are fulfilling the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.